I lost my mum at five, went into a home, and then went and lived with my auntie, who's my oldest brother was abusing me from two up to 15. My dad abused me when I was little at five. Then I lived with my auntie, moved around a lot, went to different schools, seven different schools. Um, then I went and lived with my sister and that was terrible as well. <clears throat> I was abused by her as well. And then I was living on the street. And then I lived with my boyfriend. He abused me. So I've been through abuse all my life and that. And I've been homeless as well, so yeah. We have seen a cohort of children who are now living in a motel room with very limited facilities for their mothers or their parents if it's a family to provide for them. And we are seeing the impact on those children um, in all areas of their development that um, living in a motel room can cause. And we are struggling to find, to help them find that pathway out of homelessness and into accommodation because of the rental crisis, because of um, the housing situation in South East Queensland, that there aren't the homes that our families can afford. It's really hard on the boys because like, they haven't got a father figure, they've only got me as the mum and the dad. Yeah. And it's really hard because like they haven't got a dad in their life and they're sort of like trying to get around it, but they can't. Yeah. How many bedrooms is the ha Department of Housing looking at for you? Between three and four. Three and four. But, like, I don't care. Yeah. Even my oldest boy said, I don't care, Mum, as long as it's a house that we can live in and sit around and eat dinner together. We have our Families to Home team is our homelessness um, service for families. Um, and I think what my project saw since COVID is that um, coming to our door around homelessness that we saw a huge increase that families were needing support around accommodation, safe accommodation. So that team at this moment um, is supporting up to seven, over 70 families in temporary accommodation. For children, we, we're there to help the parents get them back into things such as education, that when you're changing motels, that doesn't always happen. We're talking that these families are quite often in motels for long periods of time. So I think when we look at our numbers, we probably would go six to nine months at least a family will spend in a motel. We've got one family at the moment that's been in a motel for 19 months. And what that means is trying to connect her and her children with local services that she can access so they can do things like go to school, go to childcare. I had a partner. He was really good with the kids and that. And then I fell pregnant with Brandon, who's seven, and he passed away two weeks after my son was born. And that is yeah, devastating. I was supposed to get married to him that year, and the boys are just, they miss him. They asked about him. Um, my 13 year old is now getting in trouble with the law. I want him home with me, but it's hard because we're in a motel. And my 17 year old is staying with his girlfriend who's, they're practically surf, couch surfing. Me and my son's in a motel and he misses his brothers. He wants them home. We're not just focusing on one area. We're trying to see what the family would need. Sometimes the first port of call is that housing first response, that we can't actually address anything until that woman and her children know they've got a place to put their head down that night. And that when we talk to them about um, their income and that we might discover that they, you know, they don't have the right income they're not, or their benefits have dropped off for whatever reason, that maybe they haven't had the right food and that all of those sorts of things can start to get addressed fairly quickly and I think our, our teams are really skilled around identifying that with people. There's no shame here about needing that support and that, that I think is what comes across from the teams is about this is what we do, this is what Micah is here for and we will support you around that because we know that in the future we will help you work out how to navigate this. And so I think there's around addressing those things to create 
a safe space to be able to dress the next layer and then the next layer and keep going. <laughs> Off. Go on, you fall off. I got the news when I was in the motel that I had a house and I am so happy. And my kids are so happy because we're all back together. The house is done. <laughs> it's all clean now. Come in. Have a look. Okay, this is lounge room. My 13 year old son's bedroom in here. And this is mine and Brandon's room. 